Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, accept my compliments for allowing us to reserve time and place for this very important motion. And Mr. Speaker, allow me to equally compliment the leader of the majority and the leader of my minority for speaking not just from their minds, but especially from their hearts. I never thought in my life that in this house I would listen to the wonderful speech by the young Senator Aaron Kiriot. We have been trying to steer this parliament in that direction and some people wanted to read defiance. No. Listen to the words of the leader of the minority. He is telling the Gen Z that at no time in this parliament have we ever locked anybody from accessing us. They didn't have to lose lives, lose limbs, result in loss of property for them to have an opportunity for a photo session in this house. Every day, the speaker's gallery and the public gallery has not only remained open, but it always has people. There are times, Mr. Speaker, when we are not sitting, the sergeant at arms allows people to come and sit in these benches. We didn't have to pay this price. Mr. Speaker, I therefore want to open my remarks by passing my profound heartfelt condolences to all Kenyans who lost their lives, who were injured, and whose property was destroyed. Mr. Speaker, I specifically missed to sit in this house on Wednesday last week when I should have because a woman who has been sending me, selling me fried groundnuts and oranges in Kakamega, Caroline Shiramba, was shot dead. She sells outside the office of the governor. Mr. Speaker, equally here in Nairobi, a young man from Malinya was shot dead. So these things have come very close. And for those who thought that this was something for a particular set of Kenyans, when I went to visit the victims at the General Hospital in Kakamega, one of the victims was the son of one of my chiefs. He was at the forefront in Kakamega. You saw even the son of the Attorney General of Kenya was also involved. I saw the son of Honorable, my brother, Junjuri, was involved. I particularly don't know where my children were. Probably they were also involved. The only thing that missed was that they were not captured on camera. Mr. Speaker, where are we? Three, four things that are unprecedented have taken place. The first one is that for the first time in the history of this country, the president refused to ascend to, to the finance bill. It is unprecedented. Two, Mr. Speaker, the youth did what they did. Some people call it inversion of parliament. Others call it desegregation of parliament. I don't know what to call it. I can only say they did what they did. Mr. Speaker, never in the history of the four presidents we have had in this country, have they ever de contemplated on deploying the military the way we did? Finally, 
you saw across the whole country members of the public torching homes and properties of elected leaders. We are indeed in a bad place and therefore as we say in our community when you are mourning you don't mourn with shame. We must speak to it as I wish to do now. Mr. Speaker, we are where we are today because Kenyans hate and are angry with the ongoings in the country. And if we don't speak to them and take action, we will go nowhere. It was never the finance bill. It was simply that the finance bill was a trigger. Why? Because public servants led by ministers are very, Mr. Speaker, corrupt. And people hate this and people are angry. Yesterday, colleagues, I was called by a minister whose name I don't wish to bring on the floor because it's not necessary. And he was very angry with me for the position that I have taken, especially over the weekend in Nabaholo, over corruption in the cabinet. He told me very many strong and bad things. Because people who the other day we were working with here want to think because the Constitution has given them a different office as opposed to the offices as ourselves we have been given, they are therefore in high heaven, they should be worshipped, nobody should mention their name even when they are wrong. Mr. Speaker, people are angry and hate public servants because of our own making. The public display of wealth and opulence, unless members of the public can quickly see where you've gotten it, they will not be happy. Over the weekend, I was speaking of a young member of parliament from my community who has bought a helicopter. And I know him very well. I wish him well to continue accumulating wealth. I wish him well to continue accumulating wealth. But please, I'm asking the president to ask himself, how can the membership of an MP to a committee of parliament be the basis for him to be able to afford some of the things that are not affordable? 